Hello um, and welcome to Radio Public Library Facebook Live. We invite you to join us today for a slice of Anxiety to Calm, where you will learn some techniques to find calm and live well from the Alberta Anxiety to Calm program. Presented by Primary Care Network, staff Karin, registered psychologist, and Lana, mental health counselor. So please welcome Karin. Good afternoon. We're happy to be here. Uh, it's Monday. Uh, lots of um, lots of extra things to feel anxious about these days, as uh, we all are going through this unique time in history. Uh, so we want to tell you about our program and offer you some tools that might help you today. And so I'm going to turn this over to my colleague Lana, and she's going to start us off with our time together today. Hello everybody and welcome. So today we're gonna give you a little bit of a slice of our Anxiety to Calm program. And if you don't know much about the Primary Care Network, it is a partnership with your local doctors, with Alberta Health Services, and the other um, staff members that are involved with the organization are, are other health care providers. So for example, like Kareen, a psychologist, social workers like myself, there's registered nurses, there's rec therapists, there's many other pharmacists that are involved to create different programs and coordinate care for all of their patients. So today we're going to be together for about 45 minutes and we're going to just let you know a little bit about our program, uh, give you some education a little bit about anxiety and also offer three of the skills that we offer in the class to you as well. So for a little bit about the program, the program was developed in about 2012, so about nine years ago, and it has been, it has been incorporated into many different other PCNs. We've, we've trained many other program facilitators. It um, is a very simple, positive, and empowering program that allows individuals to have access to low-cost, low-tech strategies and skills to help manage their anxiety. It also um, provides us with lots of different tools that people can incorporate into their daily lives. And I think we can go to the next slide, Karine, unless there's anything else that you wanted to add to that. Okay. So the structure of our classes. So this program is eight weeks long. It's two hours each week, either on an afternoon. Sometimes there's some morning programs and there are some evening classes as well. They, um, are set up in three different categories. So there's a fine calm section that offers a lot of different relaxation, grounding skills, just to help calm down your nervous system and help with some of those symptoms that anxiety can um, plague the body with. And then the second area is challenging myself. And this is based on cognitive behavioral therapy skills. And it gets you to challenge many different things around your thoughts, get you to widen your perspective, change your behaviors to kind of approach anxiety, and then also being able to honor your emotions and look at the other emotions that are also within you that need to be addressed or at least honored. And then the live well section looks at at certain areas of our lifestyle that can either amp up anxiety or things that we can do that are very helpful for decreasing the anxiety. For example, getting better sleep and um, exercise. We also have a check-in and check-out each week that allows the participants to be able to figure out a, a plan for themselves as to how they're going to incorporate the skills into their daily life. And it allows for some accountability. It allows you um, to look at what you're gonna be doing in the future and adding on to the skills that you learned from the weeks before. And then the check-ins also 
um, each week allow you to recognize your successes and your challenges. Okay. So the benefits for the for the eight week program. So we've been um, gathering evaluations the last nine years. It's been around, and people have noticed quite a significant decrease in their distress levels when it comes to anxiety, and overall their overall health, mental well being, and just being able to be involved with their community and their family improves. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to that, Kareen? No, no, it's great. Okay. okay, so moving on to the next slide, we want to talk about health, healthy anxiety. So our bodies are pretty fabulous. They are um, wired for us to experience anxiety um, and to be able to respond to um, threats and dangers and get fired up for doing courageous things. And so there is a part of anxiety that can be healthy. And how we describe that is when looking at this picture, depending on your experience with bears, um, you might be feeling quite anxious. Like what are they doing putting this big black bear on, on the screen? I mean, I thought this class was gonna help us. <laughs> Um, so people's reactions may be different depending on, on what they've had happen with bears. And it would be normal to feel a bit of anxiety, especially if you could imagine yourself in this actual situation. So once the bear goes away, what is supposed to happen is that our anxiety goes away. Um, if we were in this situation, what would happen is this alarm system, this fight, flight, or freeze response would kick in. And on this slide, there's a bunch of physiological things that happen in our body without us having to tell ourselves what to do. This is just on autopilot. Um, our heart is going to beat faster. Uh, our pupils are going to dilate. We're going to get tunnel vision because we just have to get all our resources to activate our body to jump out of the way to go to safety. Once we get away from that bear, we might be sort of, our, you know, our body might be a bit of a, a fluster, a bit upset for a while, but you know, within a pretty reasonable amount of time, um, when we're safe, our body starts to calm down and we return to that normal heart rate and we can go about our day-to-day -day business. When anxiety becomes a problem would be like this, now we're, looking, we might be at home, uh, we go over to our friend's house and we're looking at pictures of our weekend camping trip. And all of a sudden, our anxiety symptoms start dialing up again, just like the previous slide. And we're going, what the heck is going on? Like, I know I'm not with the bear. I'm just looking at pictures and it feels like it's happening all over again. And so sometimes we call that stressed, anxious, worried, nervous, overwhelmed, and sometimes we're really confused about why this is happening. What we know is that there's this little uh, center in the middle of our brain called the amygdala, and it focuses and it reacts, well, it doesn't focus, it just reacts on emotional memories. So we look at those pictures and we get this, oh, maybe a sense of dread or overwhelm about remembering what happened, and off goes that alarm, even though we might just be sitting in a safe apartment building. So in our program, we help people fix their alarm. And we, we learn about the different ways that we can set off our alarm um, when we're not actually in danger. Now, of course, what's going on in the world right now does make us feel like we can, we can feel threatened every day when we're listening to the news and when we're thinking about perhaps that we could actually uh, have a health problem. Um, but again, these tools that we have today will help you um, deal with the feelings of anxiety that are not going back down to normal when you're actually safe and you're in a safe place and there really isn't uh, danger going on. Okay. So our very first skill that we wanted to share with you today might sound a little bit like back to the basics. Breathing is something that we don't have to think about. We just breathe, right? Um, when we get stressed or anxious, our heart rate goes up. 
And we can't think our way into making our heart slow down. So breathing is really important. The first thing to do um, that is a telltale sign if you're maybe not in a calm or relaxed state is that your breathing will be different. As we get tight muscles, we start to pull in. Um, if we feel a bit nervous or overwhelmed, maybe we have too many things to do on our agenda today, we start taking very shallow breaths. So the first thing to do is kind of check in with, where's my breathing? What's, what's my breathing like? Very calm people, and you might even know this when you're sleeping or doing something that's very peaceful to you. Your breathing will go, and you can put your hand just on the top of your chest and one hand on your belly. And I want you just to breathe like you normally would and see where that air goes. So mine's a little bit in the middle which is probably to be expected because I'm talking and I'm doing this presentation. But when I'm relaxed, my air is going to go all the way down into my belly. Over time, if we've been living with a lot of anxiety and stress, our breathing becomes quite shallow. And you might notice it just kind of stops in your chest and then you exhale. So breathing, if you find that you're not having those deep breaths, um, Resetting that so that that little amygdala goes, oh, everything's okay. There really isn't an emergency. Otherwise, it's kind of like you're holding your breath waiting for what's going to happen. So I want to share with you a breathing technique that's called six and two. Um, I find it easy to remember. I call it six to six. Um, so I want to just invite you to do this with me. And just know that if you have quite shallow breathing, it might make you feel a little funny. You might feel a little dizzy. Uh, it might just feel weird because over time that wear and tear on our body, when it's just about ready to go into fight, or fight, flight or freeze, it gets tense and our breathing won't be deep and it will feel a little strange. So I just invite you to close your eyes and to notice your breath. Just you, you've kind of connected with where it is right now. Then I want you to start by deepening your breath. And you might even notice if your hands are on your lap that your hands rise and fall as you breathe. And I'm gonna count us through the six to six where we inhale and exhale for six and we hold for two. So I'm gonna count this out and follow along as close as you can, that's comfortable for you. So inhale, three, four, five, six, pause, two. Exhale, three, four, five, six, pause, two. Inhale, three, four, five, six, pause, two, exhale, three, four, five, six, pause, two, and just do a couple more at your own pace. Okay, thank you for those of you that tried that. And you might notice that that has made a slight difference in your body and just how you're feeling right now. So the third thing to do with your breathing, if you noticed your breathing was tight or not, the way to reset it so that you return to sort of that healthy anxiety place is to do this several times a day. So between one to three minutes, if you have that. Um, so if you wanna reset your breathing so that you are at that good, calmer place that your body thinks things are okay. Your heart rate isn't going too fast and all those kind of things that happen. So you can start working on breathing um, using this one 
or there's many other ones online that if you were to Google, you could find ones that even have little um, symbols that go in and out. Um, and so one of the places to start would be to um, work on getting your breathing back to a, a, a good place where it's restorative and going down into your belly. So I hope that that can be helpful for you today and that you have a little more understanding of kind of what's going on when that uh, emergency alarm is going off. And so then I wanna move over and turn myself off here and Lana is gonna talk to us about another tool that we have that's called the Worry Tree. It's one of our most popular tools that we have uh, throughout the years of, of teaching this program. It's almost, uh, it's number one most of the time. So I invite you to have some fun with that. All right. So just in general, when you think about worry, do we think it's helpful? Is there some benefits to worry? And there definitely can be. Worry serves a good purpose, especially if there's something that we can do something about. Um, it allows us to have energy to take action towards things. It, it does definitely have a lot of good things that it helps us do. However, where it can get unhelpful when, when it can start to spin and when it can start to focus on things that we have no control over and when it affects our daily lives and really affects our sleep, maybe affects you know, how we are with other people, if it stops us from doing what we want to do. So this is important to kind of um, consider. And one of the things that's really, really helpful to consider is what do we normally do when we try to um, deal with our worry? And very commonly, um, just in general, people notice that, that they'll try to control their thoughts. They're like, nope, I'm going to just stop. I'm not going to think about it. It's just going to go away. And that's a common way of trying to just let it go. However, it can work sometimes and sometimes that won't. And then the other piece that can come into play is that we could start to avoid. So there might be something we don't want to do. And that might be, for, for example, having a conversation with somebody and there might be some fear around that it might create some conflict. So you might avoid. And unfortunately, there can be some consequences to that. And things don't get um, dealt with. And things can get, um, people can deal with things that get confused. So there's usually more anxiety that can build up with avoidance because it can be something that keeps on reminding us that, oh, we have to deal with this. Oh, we have to deal with this. So when it comes to being able to slow it down and seeing what we actually do have control over, a very helpful tool is the worry tree. So um, on the next slide here, it shows an example of the worry tree. So what we're gonna do in class we actually um, get our participants to write down 10 worries that they're um, dealing with right here, right now, today. But what we'll do today is we'll just ask you to write down three different worries. And we give people um, scraps of paper and they can write it down, one worry on each scrap of paper. So if you have a, a paper and a pen around, if you're able to do that, and hopefully you'll be able to participate with us and do this today. If you don't have paper and uh, a pen, you could by chance use your phone, maybe put it in the notes section. And as, as we go through it, we'll, we'll let you know what you could do with what you write down in the notes section. So whatever you can do to be able to identify three different worries, we'll let you do that right now.
Now I want you to consider, is there anything that I can do about this? For each one of those, I want you to ask yourself, can I do anything about this right here, right now? And you're gonna make two separate piles, one for yes and one for no. So I'll let you do that right now as well. And if you're having problems figuring out if it should be in the yes or no pile, if you're feeling like you're just not certain, most likely it should be in, in the no pile. And we'll just keep it in the no pile for now. So right now, what we're going to focus on is the no pile first. So the things that you that you know that you have no control over. And that might be, for example, if you're getting married, if you're gonna be able to um, have people join your celebration next year. It could be um, you know, any kind of worry when it comes to if by chance you're gonna um, be ill at all in the near future. Those kind of things that, that you have no idea about or have no control over, then you will be putting that in that pile. So, what I'm going to ask you to do for the things that are in the no pile, I want you to rip them up and throw them away. So if you're using a phone, you could just watch the words be deleted. So do that right now and just see and notice how it feels to be able to do something different with your worry than what you normally do. So this is a way of letting it go. Many people um, find different different things other than ripping it up because you, you won't always have a pen and paper around. So it might be different things that you do, whether it be doing some breathing exercises, it could be prayer, it could be a different relaxation technique. So this is this is helpful because you're able to do some of that thought stopping, but in a way of being able to accept and recognize that you have no control over this worry and you're gonna let it go. You're making that choice to let it go at this moment. So if we look at your yes pile, I want you out of those worries. Now, if you don't have a yes pile, <laughs> because they're all in the no, just, just um, come along with us with this one. And even if you can think of something that you might be able to even problem solve, that, that might be if you're wanting to eat better, what could you potentially do better about that? So in your yes pile, I want you to um, consider what can I do now and what can I do later? So is there a specific date that I can work on this or can I work on this now? So for the later worries, we want you to fold up the piece of paper, maybe put the date on when you're gonna do, deal with it. If it's in your phone that you're doing this, it might be that you look at your calendar and put a special, a special reminder on that specific date that you're gonna look at this worry and review this worry and kind of consider, is it really important anymore? Or is there anything new that I need to change for an action plan when it comes to it? And when this worry potentially comes back up again, it might be, for example, for the for the individuals that might be getting married next year, it could be, well, I have to contact a certain venue on February 2022. And it might be that you might be thinking about this in August, you might be thinking about this in October, you'd be able to remind yourself, no, I'm gonna think about that and deal with that on my special date that I have planned that I'll give them a call. And then when it comes to the yes pile, the yes pile that there's things that you can do about it now, we want you to consider what exactly you're gonna do, but be very, very specific and be able to create a specific goal around what you're gonna do. 
So in our example here, this individual needs to pay rent. So they're needing to kind of focus on what do I need to do to be able to do that? Well, one idea would be, you know, getting a job. Right. And that might be that they might have to be very specific as to, you know, creating the resume where they're going to deliver it. And that might be after they've done all that, the worry might come back up. Oh, am I going to get a job? What if I don't get a job? It'd be being able to recognize the things that you have been able to do. And then again, being able to let that worry go. So hopefully you have found this helpful as a way of, of, of dealing with the worry a little bit differently, slowing down the thoughts, kind of being able to see what you do have control over and being able to um, feel confident in creating a plan to work towards it. On the next slide, it shows having a, a chart around all the different goals that you might have. And, you know, your, your original goal as to how you might deal with something might change. So then again, this will give you an opportunity to, to create a new goal if need be, or even being able to notice what you have accomplished, which is also very, very important. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to this, screen? No, there, there, there isn't. It's, um, well, I guess actually when I stop and think about it, um, this skill, what we tell, ask participants to do is to, to pick a time that they would go back and do this again. So the following week, um, so this can become a tool that you do every week. And the worries that you have already that you've got today, you can go back through them in a week and you might add new ones. Um, and some people put them in a jar or a book or whatever you like. Um, but the idea with this is that you would use this uh, consistently, like once a week, uh, to make sure that you pay some attention to these worries uh, before you lie in bed and have trouble sleeping. That would be the main, the main thing that, that we do in our group that's different than today. And the other important piece too is being able to recognize that each week being able to see that, you know, there was nothing potentially to worry about, I was okay. So that's also validating that piece that I, you know, I can survive, I'm doing good, doing well. Okay, so I guess then, is there anything else you wanted to say about that, Lana, before we go to the next one? Yeah. That's good, okay. All right, so um, our last activity, is called in our live well section, which is finding a pleasurable experience. Now I know I hear from many people that the things that used to give them pleasure are off the table right now. So it's certainly more challenging. And fortunately, as we change seasons, there's some new things that we can do that we haven't been able to do for a few months. So I hear people are back to gardening and being outside more and, and hopefully that provides some pleasure and when we're doing things that are pleasurable, <clears throat> we're not feeling threatened and our anxiety goes down. It's hard to be really happy and enjoying something, being in the moment um, and be anxious at the same time. So we really encourage you um, to plan some pleasurable activities, um, even though it might be challenging right now. It sounds kind of funny, but we have been teaching this program for a long time. And when we start to get that emergency anxiety response going off, um, sometimes people just dig in deeper and try to work harder and get more serious and um, they forget to have fun. And so it, it seems like it would sort of make sense that you do it, but it's the first thing that people take out as they start to get stressed. So we want you to consider that you've had something pleasurable I like to say by noon. <laughs> uh, if you're waiting till the end of the day, um, you might be pretty tired by the time you get home from whatever you're doing if it's a work day. Now these don't have to be big things, um, but things that can change your focus um, so that you're in the present moment. So of course we have our leisure activities and the things that we might like to do with our family and friends and outside of work stuff. But I want to show you something that you might want to have on hand, especially since we are a little more limited in things that we may prefer to do. So I'm going to turn my screen. What I've got here is what we would call is a um, 
like a soothing kit or a, a changing focus kit. And I've got this tin and I, I like the tin, so I pick that. And I put a number of things in here that can connect me to my senses. So I have a card that was given to me. And when I open this box, I have a number of things that, that um, have this, brings back lots of memories and it's sound. I have some scents, so some oil, a candle. I have some rocks and seashells. So I can hold this and feel the coolness or the warmth. Um, there's some memories in many of the things that are in here. I have something that's kind of goofy. And um, I have a harmonica too in here, which I won't play. But we do know that music can bring that sense of joy for people too. So this isn't a very big box. I've got some pictures that I have on the lid um, and things that actually bring me into the here and now um, that, that sort of are grounding, but are also bring a bit of a smile to my face. So um, if you looked at our list here, the see, the hear, uh, smell is really important because it's one of the first things that connects that uh, settles down that nervous system when it starts to go into fight, flight, or freeze. So some kind of favorite smell. Um, I've got some sensory tactile things. And I do have a little bit of chocolate in here. I think it's been in here for quite a while because it's Easter. But I just invite you to think about whether you might have a kit like this, uh, just to change your focus. If you really find that you start worrying or you just notice that you're you're feeling tense, your muscles are tensed, your heart rate is increasing. This might be a way to just bring that down um, without actually having to do a bigger activity, like maybe you don't have time to go for a long walk or something like that. So just something to think about that you are planning these things and it is really normal to forget to do pleasurable things uh, when we're stressed. So um, yeah, so that's, that's really what we wanna leave you with is this idea. Uh, and I, what we'd like to do, actually, we've left a little bit of time, I think, still, um, if there was any questions. That was really helpful. Um, I really liked some of those ideas that you had today. Um, I guess... You know, I think one of the questions I have is what else can I do when I'm feeling anxious that you haven't already told me today? So like breathing really works well for me. I love the exercise with the worry tree. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I like the idea of having something tangible. But what happens if I'm at work and I'm feeling the time crunch and the time pressures? Is there anything else that can just kind of bring me back real quick? that you can think of? I guess maybe the pleasurable experience. Any kind of movement too, Julia? Movement's okay. very helpful for, for releasing some of the stress, right? And energy. Okay. So yeah. like like this or like shaking my foot or something? Good, <laughs> shake it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's nice and quick and easy, I guess, for sure. Well, we also have a progressive muscle relaxation in the course, so you could do parts of it. So you could do some of the shoulder because the shoulder and neck get a lot of it, right? Being able to do some um, tensing and relaxing of the muscles. Okay. Yeah, no, that's even, really good ideas. Or even being able to have your office specifically have things within it that are, are helpful for that will bring a smile to your face or just calm you. So some people will have like um, water, like a little water fountain. There might be pictures of family or even- some good being, ideas. Yeah, being able to coordinate um, coffee breaks with something pleasurable, like what Kareen just had mentioned. It might be making sure that you really savor your coffee versus just drinking it really quickly. Thank you. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, and um, those are all great. And of course, you know, sometimes we have to check with employers, but when we do let them know, sometimes people have been able to work out that, you know, I just, it's so busy around here. Could I just step outside and, you know, breathe in the sunshine and fresh air for a minute and then come back in? 
uh, kind of a reset, uh, depending on what your work is. You, you know, if you're able to do that, um, you might be able to negotiate something like that, where you just have that um, small bit of um, something nourishing before that body starts to really go into that stress response. Um, so I didn't say it and, and um, when I talked about pleasure, but it can be a micro minute. It might be that glass of water that like Lana said, or it might be just peeking your head outside and hearing a bird. Um, these don't have to be big time consuming things, but it's just that we're kind of noticing something that makes us have sort of a more, more um, positive emotion, what we would call a positive emotion, right? Thanks, that really helps. So this last little bit that we have here is our checkout. So this is very similar to what we would have in class of being able to set goals and talking about why is it important to be able to do it. And many people have found it very helpful because they're being accountable to themselves. Writing it down also makes it more likely that you're going to do it. And there's being that, that um, there's the small group discussions and being able to talk about how your week was and what you succeeded with. And then also the pieces in which you found that were challenging. So others within the group can help brainstorm with you, be able to just support you when you know, that's something you're still developing. So there's many different things that, that you could do right here, right now, after going through this slice, that if there's, if you really like the breathing technique, how will you incorporate that in? Are you going to be able to maybe set a timer on your phone or associate it with certain things so that you actually allow yourself to be able to take, you know, a few minutes in of deep breathing, right? So after, after going through the three different skills, we would encourage you and invite you just to see what would be a good way for you to incorporate any of them. So we'll give you some time just to think about that. Um, Julia, if you want, is there anything that you'd like to mention as to what you would do? Um, I, what I was thinking as you're talking, um, I think I'm going to bring a few pleasurable items to work with me. I like the idea of the scents. I think that will really bring me back when I'm feeling a little stressed because I know scents really help. Um, and I like the breathing. That one seems pretty easy to do too. Uh, I think I can do that at work occasionally. And I love the idea of the micro minute of just stepping outside for a minute here and there um, throughout the day. I think those three things I can incorporate and um, I might set a timer because that's something time kind of flies by sometimes and pretty soon it's noon and I haven't taken a break at all. So um, that, that makes a lot of sense to me to do that. So I think I'll incorporate those. Good. Well, I'm sure I, I'm sure you'll notice a difference. If you are wanting more information about this program, um, it's an eight-week program. You could contact the Primary Care Network at 403-343-9100, and uh, you would be able to find out when you could register. And um, we'd be happy to have you. Uh, the number one thing that people tell us uh, is helpful about our program is not only skills, but it's actually being in a group with other people who are struggling with a similar problem. Um, and that just makes people feel so much more com comforted um, to know that, that others are thinking and feeling the same way as them and that there's something that they can actually do to respond to that. So um, yeah, so um, give us a call if this is something that you're interested in. What happens, Corrine, if I don't live in Red Deer? Is there another way that I can access these programs? We are doing all of our programs actually on Zoom format right now. And so if you are uh, from somewhere else, um, you can still contact us because we have people from different places and are, are happy to have people come from different places. 
if there's a closer primary care network uh, that is offering the program, we can link you with them. But we are actually um, in a new area where we, we are actually getting to meet people from all over um, in different places in Alberta. So um, don't, don't let that be a barrier. Um, you, can, you can join us. And if you want to look up any programs that we have, you can uh, follow that link under the programs tab.